My name is Diane Marie Teresa Belchesic O'Reilly, and I was born August 20th, 1947. I grew up in the city of Hartford, uh, and it was a very vibrant city, and it was a wonderful place to grow up. I went to a Catholic school, and it was in the city, so I used to walk to school every day. When school dismissed, I used to walk to downtown Hartford because that was where my mom worked. So I would meet her, and we would take the city bus home together. I spent a lot of time in the Athenaeum and the Hartford Public Library, and I read a lot. I was an only child, so books were truly my friends, and they continue to be. Because I went to a parochial school, kids in my neighborhood didn't go to the Catholic school. They went to the public school. So my friends from the Catholic school would come and visit. Um, I had a wonderful friend, her name was Monica Kennedy. She was a beautiful black girl. But she was my best friend, and many, many years later, I was having Brian in the hospital, and she was my nurse. So I met her that many years later and it was so wonderful to see her. My happiest memories are all the times I spent with my cousins because there were 11 of them and then me and they were like brothers and sisters to me so if I could spend my holidays with them or we could go on vacation to the beach with them. I am so close with my cousins. We are just like brothers and sisters and the best part of all of that is we can really have a good time with each other. Nobody ever hesitates if I say, come on, we're going to have a party, we're going to do something. Everybody's all in every time. I met Edward James O'Reilly in West Hartford, Connecticut. And I walked into Smith School Yard one day, and I looked up, and there was a person sitting on the very top of the frame of the swings. And all I could see was these bright Kelly Green sneakers. And I looked at my girlfriend and said, now, what is that? What an idiot. Why does he have green sneakers on and why is he on the top of the swings? <laughs> and anyways, he came down and we met and we were friends. You know, our differences were many. You know, he wore jeans and t-shirts and smoked and wore painted green sneakers. I wore more stylish clothes because I wore a uniform every day. So when I could get dressed up, I would. We went to a carnival or a fair at Our Lady of Sorrows Church in Hartford. He was there with all of his friends and he asked me to go on the Ferris wheel with him. And I did and he scared me to death and I vowed never to go on a Ferris wheel again as long as I lived. He told me that he wanted to spend his whole life with me and with my family. And I said, I don't know. We were together and we were 16, 16 and a half years old. And we ended up getting married on March 9th of that year, and his parents were totally opposed. Interestingly enough, we grew up together, and we grew up with our children. So we had, we had Kathleen, 14 months later we had Brian, Kathleen wanted another baby. She was four, and she said she didn't want a brother, she wanted a sister. So we talked to Poppy about it. And he said, I don't think so. I ended up getting pregnant with Heather, and Kathleen was thrilled when the baby girl was born. Brian, not so much. Brian stood at the top of the stairs and told me to send that baby somewhere. Uh, when I moved to this house, I had an opportunity to go to work at the Yukon School of Medicine. Uh, I left Hartford Hospital where I was working and went to Yukon in 1987 and retired from Yukon in 2014. Uh, Liam is the oldest, Liam's 27. Delaney is the next one in line, and Delaney is 25. Bella is about to be 22 on the 22nd of this month. And then we have Ariana, who is beautiful, and she's my film producer, sitting behind the camera today. And we have Jameson, who's 19. But I love them all, and I can count on them. I can call them anytime I want, and I know they'll be here for me. Um, I did stained glass a lot. I like to change the furniture around in my house all the time. Uh, and if I had a lot of money, I would constantly change everything in the house. I'd knock down the walls and all that stuff. Oh, I love to bake. I love to make cookies. I love to make truffles. I love to make brownies. I love to make cakes. <laughs> I love to make anything sweet. 
Uh, and I think it, it, for me, it's emotional. It's very emotional. When, when I'm cooking, I don't think about anything else. All I do is think about the meal, who's coming over, what time are they getting here. I love to entertain. I absolutely, I love to have everybody here. We have a big house, we have a big yard, and it's like the thing to do. I do special tables for Christmas and Easter and St. Patrick's Day is a big one. Love to do my table for St. Patrick's Day because we were married so young. Oh my God, you're out of your mind. You know, this is never gonna work, blah, 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 blah. And as a result of that, we had attitude. You know, people that said, oh, you're not going to be successful. Your marriage isn't going to be successful. You know, well, it was kind of like, I have two words for you because it's going to work. And obviously it did. It's about attitude. And if you love somebody, you get through anything. My advice would be not to wait to do anything. Do it while you can do it. Everyone says, oh, well, one day I'm going to. Or when I retire, I'm going to. Or when I turn 30, I'm going to. Do what you need to do right now in the moment, in the moment, because then you have no regrets. And that was, that's one thing that I can honestly say from the bottom of my heart. I have no regrets. Eddie and I did everything we wanted to do when we wanted to do it. So I don't look back and go, oh geez, I really wish that we would have done that. I'm so sorry he's not here and we didn't do it. And I preach that to my grandchildren and my friends and my grown children. Do it. Who cares what it costs? Guess what? You'll pay for it one day. That's just the way it goes. But don't wait to do anything. Do it now while you can.